This video shows you everything I do to cut out wood gears and clock wheels. This is not very hard and the end result is a lot of fun. And thank you to all the people watching my videos. Some people have asked to see how I cut out my gear teeth and how I get them as smooth as I do. On the scroll saw I cut right up to the black line. And then later I come back again with scroll saw file sanding strip and I sand away the rest of that black line until it's, the black line just disappears. One of the problems while you're cutting on the scroll saw is the pattern is covering up this wood grain and you can't necessarily see where the glue joints are or the changing in the wood grain pattern will change the way the blade cuts or what direction the blade's trying to go. When you start to scroll saw, these fine blades, they'll, they'll vibrate and dance around, get into a bit of a harmonic. You want to start easing your wood into that blade until you just start to touch the blade and let that blade stabilize. And then start progressing with your saw cut. I'm using a scroll reverse blade, 13 teeth per inch. Scroll reverse just means that there's some teeth that are cutting up from the bottom side. These teeth are facing downward. These are facing up. These cut the bottom of the wood to keep it from splintering. Try to keep your fingers away from this blade. Always anticipate that that blade's going to break. When this blade breaks, it can be pretty violent. Let's put these notches in this table insert. So you can imagine the damage it can do to your hand. How tight do you tighten the blade? I tighten it about that tight. That's good for me. You just have to develop a feel for the different size blades, the way that you run the saw, and what material you're cutting. If it's too loose, the blade's going to break. If it's too tight, the blade's going to break. The blade's going to break at some point in time. You're just trying to figure out how to adjust it to where it will last as long as possible for your usage. Take it very slow and easy and control the direction of your saw blade. And the only way to learn to do that is to just practice doing it. Sometimes you'll come in you'll start cutting into one of these glue joints. And the pattern is covering that. You can't see when it's coming up. And that'll be like cutting into a piece of rubber. It can be very gummy. It'll gum up your teeth on your blade. And you have to be very slow and careful as you go through that because eventually that blade will break out of that glue joint and it could jump too far into your into the wood. If you're going to make a mistake, you want to do it on the waist side of this line. You can always come back and correct that with a filing stick later. So just very slowly ease into these cuts. Hold down on your workpiece. Always anticipate that this blade is going to break. If it breaks, it can oftentimes grab onto the workpiece and slam it up and down on this table and, and break your wheel. So always hold down, always expect that blade to break. I've had these break after just one or two cuts. They, uh, they tend to last longer than you think, but they can break at any time. I usually go around and make all of the cuts on the same side of the tooth first. Then I'll go around and start cutting on the other side of the tooth and take out the root of the tooth. And then finally I'll come back with the saw blade and I'll trim out the bottom part. Sometimes I'll take the edge of that saw blade and I'll drag it back and forth along part of that tooth to kind of clean up the wood, get it a little closer to the line. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the side of that tooth like a file and just very gently slide it back and forth along there and take a little bit of that wood off. These are scroll saw files. They're a sanding abrasive that's been epoxied to a metal strip. When these are in a scroll saw, you're only using this portion. So you can use this part, both sides. I find that I work mostly from one side. So I use this area, I turn it over, then I flip it end for end, and I can use both sides again. 
These edges are real handy for cleaning up a rounded tooth farm, for getting down into corners and tight places. They don't last terribly long, and they're relatively expensive. There's only one grit available. And again, it depends on what type of wood that you're using it on. If you're using these on balsa wood, they'll last a long time. If you're using this on a hardwood like oak, not so much. If you push too hard, or just given general usage, this grit, this abrasive material will wear off. If you push too hard, like with oak, and you get this hot, this will wear out real fast. Easy does it, light touch, let the abrasive do the work. It beats the heck out of doing it by hand, using a hand file or a piece of sandpaper. The surface of these teeth is quite smooth, coming right off the scroll saw. It will have some variations and ripples in it, and we're going to eliminate that with this file. Back and forth. Keep it moving. Don't stop. If you stop, you'll end up making another notch in your tooth. Back and forth. Just keep going until the black mark from the pattern just disappears. And I go all the way around the wheel. Come back on the other side. I'll work it back and forth. Back and forth. Keep it moving. Go on to the next one. And then when we're all done, We'll come in here and we'll just use the edge of that file and we'll clean up the base of the tooth, get rid of any little little notches or indentations, saw marks that are remaining. Sometimes you'll get a piece of your pattern will peel back. I just take a glue stick, just just touch that gently, push it back down again. The last thing we can do is round the corner on these teeth. Use a file that's fairly well worn down and just just round over the corner of those of that tooth and come over on this side and do the same thing. What that's going to do is eliminate any possible interference with the pinion gear. Design of the clock allows for wood movement due to the temperature and humidity changes. By rounding over the corner of that tooth, we're keeping it from digging in with the pinion on entry and then on exit as it comes around on this side to keep it from dragging on the pinion tooth over there. That just helps ensure that the clock will run smoothly.